Hey everyone, so today I am joined by an incredible entrepreneur who is a marketing online wizard, who has a massive influence and has a great loyal following of over 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. He's reached over a million people with his teachings on personal development and enabling people to succeed better through their own um, journey. Also, he's crafted a sales funnel that has generated over seven figures. So ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce Tim Han to Entrepreneur. Thank you Tim, so much, Alex. Nice Happy to you. have you. Thank you. Very well, thank you. So Tim, our kind of uh, focus on Entrepreneur is to gain as much insight to successful entrepreneurs on their mindset, on their personal development, mm -hmm. their psychology, and what it takes to become a successful entrepreneur. Cool, it's my favorite so, topic. <laughs> great stuff. <laughs> so, so I want to start off really, so where do you come from? Tell us a bit about Tim Han. Um, so I was born uh, in Seoul, South Korea. Mm -hmm. Uh, the home of Samsung. I'm sure you've okay. heard of yeah, Samsung yeah. before. Um, and yeah, I, I grew up uh, just, I suppose, with um, a single, single mum. My father left me at the age of two. And at the very young age, I got to witness what real hustle and grind is about. Okay. And I'm not talking about those Instagram photos you see nowadays with guys, sunglasses on. I got to see somebody who, my mum, who had to literally hustle just to put food on the table. Wow. And I think even though which I'm sure we'll get to later on, mm -hmm. even though um, during my teenage years, I, I fell into the, the, the wrong peer group, I think it seeded something that I'm now experiencing now, which is the real hustle, what, what it really takes to have that passion and energy. And so, so yeah, that's really uh, where I grew up. And from there, I went to uh, Sydney, Australia wow. for a year. And then uh, finally, uh, came uh, here to England uh, and grew up in a small town called Poole okay. as my stepdad, uh, stepdad is English. So. Right, okay. And, and how old was you at this point when you came to Poole? Um, I believe around 12 or 13. Wow, okay. Yeah. Okay, good stuff. And I, I was intrigued to know kind of who was your most influential person growing up as a child? Who was something you could resonate with and kind of looked up to? Uh, for me, it, I suppose, I believe there's a timing for everything and yeah. I, I can't really say how perfect this timing was, but there's two things that really just just sent me over the edge. Um, what happened was at the age of 17, uh, I, I fell into probably the lowest period of my life, hanging around with the wrong people, yeah. this wrong peer group, yeah. and I basically caused a lot of harm to people. And I was just basically becoming who I was hanging around with. And at the time they were committing crime they're dealing drugs and so forth. Now, on New Year's Day, I remember I literally spent the whole morning with my head down the toilet bowl because I was just puking. I drank and I drank every single day pretty much. But that night, because it's New Year's Eve, I partied hard. Now, I remember in that moment, I had like a, a split second where I stopped like feeling sick. I was thinking to myself, how can I stop feeling like what I'm feeling like right now? Yeah. And I thought, if I go onto YouTube and type in presentation, I'm going to find something long, slow, and boring. Yep. So that's what I did. I, I remember I rushed to my room, grabbed a laptop, and I just typed in presentation. Wow. And long behold, I, I saw a video that popped up that went on the lines of Steve Jobs' Stanford commencement address. Now, I had no idea who this guy was, Steve Jobs. Yep. Um, I just thought, wow, 20 minute presentation? This looks boring. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it was really that speech that woke me up to something greater. So you say Steve is one, was one of the most Wow. wow, really? Yeah. Wow, that, that's a that's a big person in 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 kind of the generation of entrepreneurship, really. So, yeah. and I mean, wh what was your biggest fear growing up as a child? Biggest fear? Yeah. Um, I suppose I'm <laughs> fearing a lot of things. I, I used to suffer from social anxiety, okay. so I used to fear people. Okay. Um, used to s fear um just everything taking risks and what kind of I mean with social anxiety because that's kind of a big topic I mean mm. what kind of emotions did you feel at the time going through that I mean w w was it with crowds of people or um, I couldn't actually get f it got worse and worse okay. uh, as time went on uh, it got to a stage where I couldn't actually go out to shopping centers because I thought everybody in cars were looking at me so I couldn't walk on the uh, pavements and stuff wow. so I was just bed bound I was just staying in my room just playing video games so wow okay that must be a hard time to go through, really. Mm. And it did knock your confidence going forward? Definitely, definitely, yeah. Yeah, I can imagine. So, I mean, I want to treat, because you look quite young. How, how old are you? Uh, 25. 25, wow, yeah. God, it's really young. 
still young. I think you're, you're the youngest person we have on Ultimo <laughs> so far, actually. <laughs> really? Yeah, <laughs> pretty good. So you've already mentioned about um, growing up as a, as, as a child into your kind of teenage years. Mm. I mean, what was the early signs of entrepreneurship that you can you kind of hinted at, the early signs that you developed? Um, definitely around that pivoting point, which was after discovering Steve Jobs' speech yeah. and then my mum taking on me on a very long walk, wake me up. Mm. Um, I began to realize that it was very strange, even though <laughs> they were so different from me. I remember watching this show called Dra Dragon's Den, okay. and I was really intrigued by it, and I, d I don't know why. <laughs> and that was really, I, I think, when I began to realize that this is interesting. Mm. This was really different. It was far beyond what my friends were doing. Yeah, so, yeah. At the yeah. time, with your peer yeah. group, who were getting you in trouble. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And this long walk, um, I've heard about this briefly before. Can you explain that about that long walk with your with your mum? Mm. I mean, there's a pivotal point in your life, right? It, it really was. And this is what I'm saying. I, I believe. Yeah, I believe everything just happens for a reason. And it was only a couple of days after Steve Jobs' speech. Yeah. And. You know, after listening to Steve Jobs, I was inspired, but inspiration, motivation is temporary. Yeah. Sometimes you just need that whack around the head, and this was what it was. Um, my mum took me on a long walk, and she reminded me of my, my basic father who left, uh, left us. Yep. And she said to me, Tim, you know, when I was younger, I did everything for you. I had to work day and night just to put food on the table. You know, I've, I've stayed up for you. I've, I was tired every single day. The question is, are you going to be there for me when I need you? Wow. wow. And yeah, I was, it just, the, the message just landed at just a level that I've never really experienced. And that's when I really woke up, yeah. Wow, that's not, that sounds like it cut you mm -hmm. really deep. Um, so, so, I mean, with your kind of um, very busy, busy schedule and mm -hmm. you speak quite a lot and you've got, uh, quite a, I can imagine a quite a busy kind of agenda to keep to. Mm -hmm. What what's your morning routine? Because a lot of successful people I interview mm -hmm. always have a morning routine. I'm just intrigued to what find out what yours is. Um, so my morning routine it's really changed over the years. Okay. Um, I used to be very very strict <laughs> with morning routines. Yeah. Um, I still am to a certain extent, depending on who you're comparing me to, I suppose. Yeah. Um, nowadays um, I, I wake up. Uh, I go to shower and I often do a cold shower and I trans firstly go into warm and then I transition into cold. Why is that? Uh, it just trains my action taking machine, I like to call it. Okay. Because I love it because you're having the warm shower and you, you can hear the unconscious saying, wow, this is pleasurable. Yeah. And so the moment I turn it to cold and I step out, by the way, I turn it to cold and I can hear the, the subconscious saying, don't do this. Yeah. This is stupid. And this is that same voice that holds back a lot of people from venturing out there and doing something big. Okay. So first thing in the morning, I take action on that. I'm telling my subconscious, I'm going to do whatever it takes. Now, after that, uh, I have breakfast, take my supplements, and then I'll go to the gym. Uh, I can really tell when I haven't, haven't gone to the gym. After the gym, meditation and a bit of journaling, and then I just basically um, uh, have a look at the, the day ahead okay. from there. Great stuff. And you, so you said the action making machine. Action taking action machine. Action taking machine, yeah. sorry. So, I mean, does that little kind of um, exercise you go through in the morning, the cold shower and the warm shower, mm. is that just like a, I don't know, setting up for a win before the days even began, really? Yeah. Is that, is that what it kind of, is it prime you or? Pretty much, yeah. yeah. It, it does, yeah. It, I can tell when I haven't done it. <laughs> really? Yeah, like, yeah. The difference, I really can. And it, what, it affects your day going forward in a positive or negative way, is it? It's just like instantly just changes my state. It really okay. does. It jolts my state. Because sometimes, you know, I'm not superhuman. Sometimes yeah. I wake up feeling pretty terrible. Yeah, pretty, yeah. Pretty miserable. Yeah, me too. So I need something <laughs> to just wake me up, and that's what it really does. Okay. And, and how do you relax and unwind as an entrepreneur? I mean, you've got businesses, and how do you kind of let go? Um, I suppose uh, <laughs> this is where my fiance comes in handy yeah. because she's very good at uh, tr trying to help me detox from business and stuff. So we just go on long walks. Okay. Uh, sometimes we just like literally walk from like one end of London to the other. I really like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. So just just long walks, just yeah. talking about life and stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Great stuff. And me and my partner do that as well. So <laughs> nice. <laughs> we should go on a long walk together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
<laughs> so um, you, you've touched on peer group already. So yeah. one of the questions, I, and a lot of the entrepreneurs I've studied over the years, mm. um, they're very, very selective about their peer groups. Mm. So I completely agree, and I'm very selective with my peer groups as well. I mean, why do you think it's crucial that entrepreneurs or people who want to succeed in life are selective about the people they associate with or, or hang around with? I, I've, you know, it's funny because people share this stuff on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And I, this is something I always say to insiders is like, the question is, are you doing the stuff you share? Mm -hmm. Because people talk about peer group and people know it themselves. They're like, oh, law of conformity. You, you become who you hang around with. Mm -hmm. And the moment I actually asked them, okay, so who is within your peer group? They're like, oh, I was just all hanging around with, with my old friends. I, I actually, my, journey has been about the impact of peer group yeah because when i fell into the wrong peer group guess what i became one of them yeah and now i'm just becoming the people I hang around with today so i think it's law of conformity and you know if you don't mind me saying this like it's basically people i found because i went through it myself they don't want to upgrade their peer group because they they love their friends mm. they don't want to leave them behind but the truth is if you truly love your friends you'd be more than happy to leave them and here's why because if you're the person who's currently excelling in your peer group, you're often staying within the peer group for significance because they look up to you. And most of the time, you, what, what happens like you, you get mentored by your coach and you tell all your friends, oh my God, this is what you should do. And then what happens? Nothing happens, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The truth is, if you go out there, you leave them behind, go out there, get results, they will be more inspired. Yeah. I believe results will just inspire them to take action. Kind of results never lie as well. That's yeah, the kind of thing. Exactly. I mean, do you get kind of, I mean, do the peer groups, um, that the peer group you used to hang around with, because um, do they get like jealous of seeing your success now and kind of, are they the same level? Are they, and? Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. I've not spoken to them in a while. Um, I've actually started almost a brand new <laughs> yeah, just profile as well on Facebook. Yeah. So I didn't actually get to see any of, any of the status updates. Wow. Because it's, you know, because they're based in a, you know, south of England and I'm yep. now in, in the city. Yep. It's interesting because every time I go back, same drama, same news. And mm. it's just, it's contagious. It really is. Yeah, yeah. I, I completely agree, Tim. So, I understand you are a peak performance coach as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, can you explain a bit more about that? What got you into that? Why, why did you do it? What, what made you, inspired you to take action to become a peak performance coach? I suppose I had a, it was almost like, calling intuition okay. that it was my time to to give back and it was really sparked on by people who were asking me a lot of questions um they were particularly interested in how i transform my life mm -hmm. and um i believe the moment you align with your truth just doors just open effortlessly you know i didn't try hard to make success inside the, the youtube channel what it is today yeah it just just boom it just went viral yeah and it's funny because several years before, I tried to do something similar mm -hmm. and nothing was happening. Like I've got like 100 views and then all of a sudden getting like 4 million views on a video. I think it's because life is telling me right now, this is the journey to be on. Yeah. And so I'm not resisting the current. I'm just flowing with it. Right. Okay. So it's, you feel like rather than you pushing against it, it's pulling you. Yeah. That's, that's what, what I feel it. like. Yeah. Right. Okay. That's interesting. So as in, in the personal development world, what yeah. would you advise is the the three kind of really good techniques you could advise someone to take action towards their own goals and aspirations as an entrepreneur? Um, I would say put down your books. Wow. Okay. <laughs> just, I've never heard that before. <laughs> <laughs> and just hear me out for one moment because yep. I believe for things to change, you have to change. And, you know, it's, Einstein says it's best. Insanity is doing the same thing over and over, expecting different results. So, what I'll say to you is, is a, an advice I've received from somebody I know who is worth billions. And he's only ev ever read several books in his life. Okay. Now, I was interested in that because for me, I, I've been sold into the vision that books, you know, is the secret. Yeah, me too. <laughs> and he said to me, Tim, let me ask you, how many hours does it take to really finish a book? And I said to him, well, five, six hours. Well, he said, let me ask you. If I was to get somebody to summarize that book for you, and he just literally spends 10 minutes and just gives you the summary, is that more worthwhile, yes or no? I was like, yeah. <laughs> He's like, well, you gotta realize that books is often sometimes, one of the reasons people refer to books is because they're procrastinating. 
I believe books is procrastination in disguise for most people. Wow. They will pick up that next book because they're scared to launch that next business or their first business. And they will forever run this pattern and they will never truly jump off the edge because they just want to make sure that they're safe, make sure their parachute's on. But that's not how you get into a game. You know, one of the lessons I learned from him is best way to succeed in business is to be in business because you learn the most from being in it, not reading about how to ride a bike. You've got to finally ride the bike. Now, what I realized was mentors, getting the actual guidance in regards to where you currently are is the fastest way because at the end of the day, it's all about leveraging time. That's what this billions, billionaire has done. He's leverages other people's time so he can become a billionaire. Wow. While most people will spend literally whole weeks reading books, get no results. That makes perfect sense as well. Because I'm a big reader. I read like two books a month. Mm. Um, but yeah, I mean, that time I am reading, but I suppose I could take an action. Unless, I don't know, it would be a technique to just read I don't know, 10 pages a day rather than a prolonged period. I don't, I don't know, but it makes complete sense. It does. Absolutely. Or we'll just get the summary. <laughs> yeah, 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 we'll just yeah. get the summary. He literally just pays out somebody to read a book for him and he'll get the summary. Wow. Or he will actually hire the author and spend the day with them. <laughs> that's of course, not everybody's got the funds to do that. <laughs> no. But that's really, if you was to model that behavior, that's somebody who really values his time. Wow, yeah, so, definitely. Okay, great stuff. And, and number two? Number two, I would say peer group, and I don't want to touch upon that again, but yep. peer group is everything. If yep. you don't have the right peers, forget it, yep. right? Yeah. <laughs> That's just waving goodbye to money and whatever you want. Yeah. Um, the third thing is to, to master your unconscious mind. I believe most people out there will never succeed because they never realize the multiple voices that's really happening in their mind. Now. There are several, several identities we carry. We, we haven't got time to go into that today, but if I was to say to you that within you or within us, there's a champion, and that's the voice that tells us we can. That's the voice that you know, makes us leap off the edge and really believe in ourselves. Mm. And there's a voice called a criticizer. Right. That's the voice that we all are familiar with. Yeah. That says, yeah, we could, but this, it may be not be the right time. It comes up with reasons why you can't. And yet most people in life i found, because they don't become conscious of the patterns they're running, they listen to this criticizer and they will forever, ever grab hold of them for the rest of their life. Wow, so, yeah, they're so being true. a victim, yeah. I mean, I, I, you hit the nail on the head. Like I, I, I mean, when I launch businesses or brands, and especially when I started investing in property or entrepreneur, you do get this voice in your head. And you're like, Alex, you could do it, but what if this happens? Mm. And you quite, and, and everyone's got this, I'm assuming, right? Yeah. But the action takers, I'm assuming, just don't listen to that, and they listen to the one that says, go for it. Yeah, this was advice that I got given from a very successful person uh, within the health uh, niche. Yeah. And he said to me, Tim, when it comes to business, I followed this advice. Ready, fire, aim. And I was like, wow. And he's like, listen, you're not, you've not been succeeding, Tim, because you've been readying, you've been aiming, and never firing. That's great, that's <laughs> and was, amazing. And it really got to me, I was like, yeah, that's so true. And I found 99% of people out there are forever running this pattern. Readying, aiming, and never firing. Wow, so, yeah. that's awesome. Great stuff. So tell me a bit about Success Insiders. Tell me how did that get started? What is it about? The people in it? Um, so yeah, Success Insider is a, a YouTube channel that I created uh, around 15 months ago. 15? 15, 15, 15, yeah. Wow. And I, the sole aim was to really create a movement because it was something that I didn't have. I wanted to create something that I wish I had when I was younger. To Because to, when I was living in a small town, it wasn't easy as London where you go to meetups. The only way I could really find somebody inspirational was online, but I didn't really have that. It took me a while to find the right peer group as a result. So I thought create a platform where people can network with people from all different walks of life. And that's what Success Insider has become. Within the, the Success Insider community, there are people earning seven figures and they're literally a 13 year old beginning wow. their journey. And I don't stop a 13 year old coming in because I believe that's gold. 
I believe everybody's got some sort of lesson we can just learn from. Yeah. And for somebody just to be earning eight figures, nine figures, and saying, oh, it's not worth listening to, I think that that's just being, I, I don't think that's the key there. Mm. I think you should always be a keen student, no matter what your success is. So, so yeah, it's just a movement of people who are willing to do whatever it takes to become the best version of themselves. What I like to call the life we were born to live. Wow, that is powerful, that's really powerful. It's great. And with Success Insiders, I'm assuming kind of you, um, do you engage them constantly? What kind of engagement? Because I, I, I believe that it's, mon it's run by uh, managers, so it's mm. kind of protector and it's a good source of content for mm. people who want to run. Cause I'm, I'm in it and it's phenomenal and I've learned so much from it. So, so yeah, it, do you kind of um, provide content on a regular basis to, to Success Insiders or? Uh, yeah, we, 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 we've got community leaders. Uh, we've got Gigi and uh, Andrea, got community manager, uh, Makey managing it all for me. And it's really cool. Uh, we, we do, every week we, we share uh, a daily insights and um, we have different days allocated. I believe I've got Wednesday, <laughs> right. and we just share wisdom, what, what they're after, which is often business or mindset. And we also do secret challenges, which are challenges that makes us really get out of the comfort zone. But because we've got the support of the insi inside the community, we, we propel ourselves forward together. I truly believe nowadays, businesses that believe and frown upon and just look down on competition, I believe they're gonna be wiped out. Mm. I believe we're in the collaboration era. It's all about collaboration. Mm. And this is what I'm really trying to create is a, is a hub where everybody is just, you know, just one. We just support each other yeah. in launching our businesses. And that's what Success Inside is really becoming. So, yeah. That's awesome, you must be so proud. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. So how did you get in the world of online marketing? Where did that come from? Where, what sparked it? Tell me a bit about it. Um, <laughs> it happened from, Okay, one of my, I was covering this um, at an event, which was um, that you got to target people's problems. Yep. Okay, one of the problems I had when I was younger uh, was dating, because I was suffering from confident issues, social anxiety, and so forth. And so I began to look for solutions online. And it's when I, I became passionate in learning this stuff, okay? And then I, I'm, I've mastered it, and then I wanted to, really just find out more in regards to the psychology things. I've really found it fascinating. And what I realized was marketing was very similar to learning psychology because you got to learn consumer psychology yeah. in regards to why we buy the things we buy. And that's when everything just entwined and I was like, wow, this online marketing world is absolutely amazing. And that was at the age of 17. And so from there, I created a YouTube channel, which was within the music industry. Okay. Uh, it was sparred on by the fact that it was ego driven, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> One of my friends said to me, I've got terrible taste in music. Okay. So I said to him, I'm going to prove you wrong. I'm going to create something very big. Yep. And I went on and I jumped on a um, uh, back of a very big wave that was coming okay. within the dubstep niche. Dubstep, okay. Yeah, and I created a, a UK, UK Filthy Dubstep series and it reached literally over a million hits um, overall. And uh, that allowed me to create a clubbing events business and it was just all fueled by online marketing. From there, I was hooked. I, I was like, wow. And one of the sales I ever made online, by the way, which was before that, was I was reading a paper one day and it said you can buy, buy luck and it's more luckier if you buy it. And I was like, I'm gonna try selling this. And, okay. I, I, and I started to sell luck on eBay and people used to pay me to, to, for me to send them a good luck message. And I was like, if somebody's willing to pay me for a message, Imagine if I actually deliver them value, the, the business I yeah. can create. And that was when I just had the light bulb moment. Wow. That this was what I wanted to master. Wow, yeah. that's, that's, that's awesome, that's a good story. <laughs> wow, so, so what do you believe is the best kind of platform to market on right now, what's, what's current? I mean, in, in, in the olden times, for our age, mm. um, it was like newspapers and, and TV, I'm, I'm assuming, but what, what's powerful right now? Facebook. Uh, I okay. think Facebook is uh, very, very powerful. But it's more in regards to what you're doing on Facebook. The biggest belief I've got is that we're not in the B2C business, which is business to customer. We're not in business to business. We are now in the era of human to human or heart to heart connection. That's the business you should be looking to build. Because this is something I was saying at, at an event. Um, if I was to ask you who's the CEO of Tesla, 
Who would you say? Elon Musk. Elon Musk. Now, if I was to ask you who's a CEO of Jaguar, I have no idea. Most people wouldn't know. No. But why? It's because Tesla is a H2H brand. You look at iPhone, Apple, who literally trumps all other competitors like Dell, like all Acer. I mean, yeah. who's the CEO of Acer, right? <laughs> no idea. <laughs> It, because it's a H to H brand, because it's a face, and I believe consumers nowadays are becoming more skeptical than ever because there are a lot of business owners chucking out marketing material out there. So people are now wanting to really know who are you really behind the logo. They want transparency. So I believe it's all about adopting these platforms, but you've got to have the right mindset and intent. Wow, that's powerful. It's so true about the Jaguar scenario. Yeah, I can't, I can't even think <laughs> what it is. So um, I've touched me on about, I've read your bio and it's a phenomenal story. The, se the seven figure sales funnel, that must have been one of the best successes at such a young age that you've gone through. Is that, tell me a bit more about that. Uh, yeah, so it was in the health supplement niche, okay. targeting men in America. And um, it takes a lot of experience and split testing. That's really what it comes down to. So. I won't go too deep into it, don't want to bore your audience, <laughs> but um, it was just Facebook ads alone. Yep. Um, it took about eight months and every single day you pull, a, pull an ad, you put a new ad out, you've got to tweak stuff on the landing page, you, mm -hmm. you may have to even tweak the offer. We did it all and eventually you get to something which I like to call a money machine where you can chuck $1,000 in and you get $2,000 back. That's when you can scale like crazy. Now we scale that like crazy. It got to a point where Facebook realized that <laughs> and they actually started to pull the ads. Really? And so we had to pivot oh. because they, they don't like health supplements. Oh, really? Because health supplements is quite, because it's not FDA approved, they can't prove whether or not it works, even okay. though you've got, you, you know, we've got the best testimonials in the world. Yeah. They can't prove that whatever you're selling actually works because one could argue the big farmers pay them out, but yeah. we won't go into that. <laughs> so they start to pull the ads, but you just have to pivot, and that's, that's what we did, so yeah. Wow, that's phenomenal, and they generated over seven figures. Yeah. Okay, hell, that's insane, <laughs> insane. Congratulations. Um, so what are the key benefits of having a digital online business compared to, I don't know, a bricks and mortar business? So what kind of, do you believe is kind of a, a key benefit? For, yeah, what's the key benefits of going forward? I, I think, if you love to travel <laughs> and you love freedom, I think digital business is where it's at. And I think now more than ever, we are living in a time where it's becoming easier. Mm. We only need to look at our neighbor to know that digital businesses is actually actually a viable business nowadays. Mm. Because imagine if I would, you know, if you would have told your parents literally 10 years ago that you're going to start an online business, they would have said, no, Alex, don't. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've read about somebody in the papers lost a lot of money. Uh, yeah. But now it's a solid foundation. There are billion dollar companies that are literally just launching online. And I believe we're living in a time like we've never seen before. And it's only going to get bigger because by 2020, Google and X are predicting that the entire world is going to be connected to the web. Wow. That is opportunity. So yeah, definitely. Yeah, and everyone's getting more connected, like you said. Yeah. So, and uh, your life mastery accelerator. I'm really intrigued. Can you tell a bit more about that? I mean, how did you start that? What is it about? Because I've heard you speak on stage before, and mm. you're a great speaker. Thank you. So uh, yeah, just elaborate on that a bit. Uh, life mastery accelerator, as the name suggests, is uh, is my flagship product. It is my only product that I actually offer to my insider community. Right. Okay. And the reason why I came up with it is I had a lot of people approach me for mentorship mm -hmm. and there's only so many people I can actually take on. And basically every month I reach around half a million to a million people. So <laughs> I would love to coach and mentor a million people, but I literally would not have a life, okay? Yeah. <laughs> so I decided to create a program where I can put eager students through where they get to find out from week one to week six, it's literally like accelerated, knowledge and results in regards to mastering your life, your unconscious patterns you may be running, why goal setting is currently broken and how you should really go about goal setting. And it is not smart. It's not specific, measurable, attainable, realistic. Because let me ask you, is Richard Branson's vision of sending people out to space on holiday, is that, is that realistic? Definitely <laughs> no. not, no, no. <laughs> and yet the guy is achieving that. 
I believe smart goal is broken and so they get to really figure out a lot of knowledge and mastery in regards to how to really just set themselves up to win because I believe you can have the best strategies in the book in regards to business success but you haven't if you haven't mastered this is wave goodbye to whatever you, you deem success as mindset is everything and I'm sure you know that from interviewing people yeah definitely mindset is everything yeah every really uh, yeah everything everyone says that I mean from the books I've read as well yeah um, podcasts I listen to mindset first success second um, and that's where it's, it's always been I believe mm. So, so, so Tim, explain a bit more about your passions. You seem quite a passionate person about helping people. But what would you say is your kind of your own unique passion? What do you love to do? Um, I like to go to the gym. Okay, great. So <laughs> I, I find that quite fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, I like something that's really scary, and like it almost kills me. That wow. Okay. <laughs> I, I like. I, I did ever since I was uh, younger because I used to ride BMXs and yeah. stuff, and I, I think it trained my subconscious to just do it and I'm not sure if you've ever been into extreme sports no never no? never you know with extreme sports say I'm um, jumping into a half pipe okay yeah. on my bike yeah there is no half heartedly you either have to go in or you don't right and okay. I think it trained my my subconscious from a very young age that it's all in or just get out right wow and so I like things that scare me really scare me and um, yeah, I want to do the crazy, crazy stuff. And I like that because I believe it just trains my subconscious. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, I mean, this is so irrelevant to businesses. I mean, going to a half pipe on a bike or skateboard or whatever it may be is an element of risk. And mm. that voice inside your head must be saying, you're going to break every single bone right now. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing? I mean, in business, how, how do you personally shut off that voice? How do you ensure that that voice does not get the better of you, so you do take action towards the business or towards goals you want to achieve? Well, firstly, I uh, make sure that it's a great decision by checking with mentors or people who are uh, further ahead of me. Okay. If I know it's the right decision, what I'll do is either get them to hold me accountable and I'll tell them a forfeit. And a forfeit has to be really painful that I would never want to do it. If it's really painful, I'm just going to take action on whatever that decision <laughs> is because you know, human beings are twice as more motivated by pain than they are to seek pleasure. So, um, so that's what I do, it's basically, <laughs> I use my psychology um, on, basically on my side, so it basically assists me to take action. Wow, powerful, really powerful. Um, and with regards to your online marketing, and I know you use Facebook Live very well, we've just done Facebook Live. <laughs> <Yes>. um, <laughs> what would you, advice would you kind of give to someone who's exploring that platform even more? What, what would you say, kind of uh, three, I don't know, three steps to, Kind of make sure you do Facebook Live. Um, so I would say the first step is to get into get into state. Okay. Um, state management is everything. It really is. So one of the ways you can get into state is to just jump around. Like you just jump, jump around. Get, crazy. Get the heartbeat pumping. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, that way you're going to seem enthusiastic and excited on video. Because here's the truth. For every second YouTube is up, there is around 10 hours worth of YouTube content being uploaded to the web. So we're living in a very saturated world. And as James Blake says, when information becomes cheap, attention becomes expensive. So the question is, how do you cut through that noise? Well, one thing I'll say to you is, if you don't have personality online, forget it. You're not going to be noticed. Okay. So you, ha you have to over amplify and you have to be excited. You've got to be passionate. So okay. get into state. The second thing, is to create a solid hook at the start. S create an open loop because subconsciously we want to close loops because it, it releases a chemical called endorphins, which is the feel-good hormone. Mm -hmm. And you'll find that drama series does this brilliantly. Any TV channel, if you watch TV right now, you, you'll see before they show the adverts, they create a solid hook. So you actually make sh you, you actually want to watch it after the adverts. Yep. So you want to model that. When you go live, you want to Make sure there's some sort of hook that makes them want to watch it right to the end. That way you've got absolutely amazing uh, engagement. The third thing I would say is to engage with everybody who's tuning in. What you can say is, um, if, you, if you can hear me nice and clearly right now, just comment yes below, and that way they're all just, all just gonna say yes. Um, you can also say, oh guys, where are you tuning in from? Just comment below and I'll give every single one of you a massive shout out and you're just engaging with them, and the moment you engage with them, they'll feel like, ah, I should watch all of it now. They feel like they've got the emotional buy-in. 
So that's the three tips. That's fantastic. That's really amazing. <laughs> Great stuff. Uh, and now touching on another three steps, mm -hmm. what would you say is a crucial in three ways to have success in an online business? Hmm. Great question. <laughs> just, uh, the, the first step I would say is this: you've got to have the right uh, strategies. Okay. Because most people out there, and I've been as well, I'm referring to Google. Yeah. And the only problem with Google is this, <laughs> and I'm sure um, your, your viewers have probably been to this stage where they Googled one thing and one article says this, and they, they Google another <laughs> thing and the article clashes. Yeah, yeah. It's because Google, <laughs> you can publish any blog onto Google. Anyone can be a, a blogger. So the question is, what's reliable information? Well, Google, I found, isn't the most reliable information due to that region, reason. It, it ends up in overwhelm. As a result, nobody ends up taking action. So I believe you've got to have the right strategies and systems and just model what really works. Um, so that's the first point, mm -hmm. get the right strategies. The second thing I would say is to really, uh, which I just hinted then, mm -hmm. just model. If you want the fastest way to, to become successful online, just like in self-development, yeah. model success. Yeah. Model somebody's mindset if you want to be successful in regards to self-development. Yeah. If you want to be successful online, model somebody who is killing it in your industry and just really just Watch what they're doing online. You can use the right tools to actually even figure out what platform they're using, who's their email provider. You can get all of this. You can mm. even find the ads yeah. they're using and you can model everything. And that's really how you get the one up. But what happens is this, which leads to a third point. Don't be creative. When you're, when you're new to online businesses, don't be creative. Because creativity is often what really kills conversions initially. Mm. A uh, great analogy I like to give is this. When you learn how to play an instrument for the first time, you, you model it. You're yeah. following along and you're just playing the little jam on your guitar. Yeah. Exactly the same as the person you're trying to model. Now, the moment you get to the mastery level, you get to play your own songs and you come up with a great melody. Problem is, online, people try to create that melody when they don't even know how to play the guitar. So, don't get too creative at the start, become creative once you've got, I don't know, six, seven figure business, that's when you can say, hey, how can I make this better? But don't reinvent the wheel just yet. That is great advice, really great advice, fantastic. I mean, I mean, what would you say is, I mean, there's loads of benefits to having a digital online business. Mm. Um, what would you say, I mean, is your kind of best reason of being in that type of business? What's your kind of why that business? Why not something different for you? Why why digital? I, I think I've always been, maybe it's because I'm Asian. <laughs> <laughs> I've always been online. I, I've, just, I've just been interested in tech. Right, okay. Digit, there's something really fascinating for me in regards to tech and um, things that are online. Yeah. I don't know why. But I did have a g gaming addiction when I was younger as well. So that was all video online. Like Xbox or PC? Xbox, yeah. and then used to play online um, multi-level games, what they, whatever they call yeah. like World of Warcraft and yeah. so forth. Yeah. And I was just hooked to it from a very young age. And so because I got used to being a computer whiz, as my <laughs> mum used to say, <laughs> yeah. whenever she had problems, <laughs> I just stuck to it, yeah. Oh, great, okay, so you developed from a young age and yeah. Great stuff. Okay, and um, what would you say is one of the main reasons people fail in business, in this in online business? Um, I would say they just don't have the right guidance. Okay, they're trying to figure it out themselves. Yep. I think that's probably why. I I too used to do the same. It's a, such a it's such a confusing world out there when you don't know what to do, and it's a great Chinese proverb. Ever since I heard it, I was like, wow, I'm going to live by it. It goes on the lines of, to know the road ahead, ask those that are coming back. And <laughs> that is amazing. Yeah, and it's crazy nowadays to think people are still just trying to craft their own path when the paths already exist. So get the right guidance. Awesome, Tim. Awesome. And where do you so decide to focus your time? I mean, for example, I mean, I when I operate my business, it's very easy to get pulled in this direction and that direct direction with regards to whether it's investors, whether mm -hmm. it's trades. I mean, where do you focus your time as a successful entrepreneur? I tend to focus on it. Um, hmm. 
What do you mean specifically in regards to focusing? Whether to succeed in your online mm. business, where do you focus your time, would you say? I think things that can grow over time and things that I know can be systemized. Because once you can systemize something, you know, it's, it's worth the initial hustle. Okay. So, if, if, for example, if I'm having a lot of meetings and I'm training somebody up, I know that's worth it because eventually they will just know what to do. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, things like that, I, I believe it's worth uh, my time. Okay. Yeah. And like you said, it's, it's quite kind of a confusing world out there with all the information from Google and friends and whoever it may be. And when things go wrong, which I'm sure I'm assuming they do go wrong in onla the online business as well. I mean, how do you lift yourself out of those tough times where you think, oh shit, this just isn't working? How do you get out of that rut? Mm. Yeah, in the online world, stats have that 80% of marketing tests will fail. 80%. Wow. So it's 20% success rate. Wow. It's, it's really slim because, yeah. and that's why for me, marketing tests is one of the things I, I tell my mentees is you should view it as a spiritual practice. Don't get attached to the outcome. And so that's the advice I would, I would give is to don't get attached to the outcome and just have that bigger vision. And it's got to be extended beyond yourself. If it's about what you want to create, the life you want to live, if it's about the money you want to earn, that motivation is temporary. If I leave you on a cliff hanging, you, you, I come back next week, you're not going to be there, <laughs> right? Yeah. Motivation is temporary. Inspiration that comes from ex really extending beyond yourself, just like marathon runners that run on behalf of charities on their first run, that pushes them to finish the, the to literally go through the finish line. Why? Because they know they're, they're supporting something that's greater. So have that greater reason for why your business exists. Now, nowadays, you have to have that because that's what consumers want. Mm. But you've got to believe in that and that will make the world of difference. It's awesome. I mean, as well as, um, like you said, it's tough times. Can you think back to one bad moment you've, you've, or bad pivot you've took in the online world and you think, oh, that really did not work, that the viewers could get, like, maybe not go down that route? Um, yeah, I, I suppose I would give advice in regards to, uh, let's say YouTube, because YouTube is becoming big. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a lot of failed YouTube channels and what I've always found is the YouTube channels that have succeeded for me, it's weird how it works, it really is. It's almost like the YouTube channels I've created in the past when I was just straight away, I was just like, how am I going to monetize this? How much is this going to make? They ended up just flopping every single time. The ones I created when I was just focused on adding value, it just it just really got shared and it went crazy. Wow, okay. And so I remember hearing from one of my mentors once that if you chase money, you're, you're chasing your own tail. Mm. And that's what I was doing. I was creating these YouTube channels looking to just, boom, ask for the sales straight away. Okay. Never add, adding value, they flopped. So I believe that was probably one of my biggest mistakes. And I've had about four or five YouTube channels that's flopped <laughs> um, over the last eight years. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, and, and, a lot, and that's quite poignant, is that a lot of people see your success, think overnight success, mm -hmm. when in fact you failed numerous times before. How do you determine when a YouTube um, show has failed? Like what kind of signs do you tell if it has failed or before you pivot onto the next or, or so forth? Um, I think if after six months, you're not really happy with the results in regards to the impact it's made, I would, I would often uh, pull the plug. Okay. And I, I can tell usually um, from knowing myself, just just intuition, just you can tell this this isn't it. And I'm so glad I've left the, the YouTube channels that I, I've left. Um, you know, Success Insider was going to be called Self Sprout. <laughs> wow, okay, Self Sprout. Self -sprout. <laughs> I'm not sure where I came up with that name. <laughs> Self Sprout. And uh, I had multiple channels like that before, which which was going to be Success Insider. Mm -hmm. And just intuition said no. Just pull the plug, start a new one. So, yeah. Okay, fantastic. Now, I always ask this question and it is, I always am intrigued to find out what the answer is. If you could have a 60 second conversation, I know you're only 25, but if you had a, could have a 60 second conversation with your 18 year old self, what would you say? So, that was like seven years ago? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't that long ago. <laughs> 
Um, I was going through still a transition period, mm -hmm. even though I'd, I'd ran a business, I was still not... Hmm. I think back then, if somebody would just tell me very firmly when I was, because I was taking a lot of risks, that it's going to be okay. It's just be in flow with the current and just just yeah I think if somebody would just said I, I believe in you I really do I, I think that would have really just given me that that support great yeah fantastic great stuff and I've seen your <laughs> I think it's a bloody brilliant video you've created on the haters and naysayers <laughs> yeah. and I, I, when I watched that I was like wow because I mean some of the comments are fucking horrible aren't they <laughs> really horrible um, and you just quite rightly read every single one reading them off I mean, how does, how do you do that? How does someone get over what the haters and naysayers, especially at the level of that video portrayed, how do mm. you get over that? <laughs> it took me a while, it yeah. took me a while. It's something that I teach on week three of uh, Life Mastery Accelerator, is um, about unconscious breakthrough. Okay. But it's, yeah, it take, it, it, basically, I, I use it as a test to see how I've mastered my mindset for the day. So sometimes I just do it on purpose. I go to my YouTube comments, go to flagged comments, which is guaranteed, okay, guaranteed <laughs> hater. <laughs> and really bad language. Because I basically highlight the, the words that's yeah. gonna be flagged. So right. if it's any swear words, I make sure I enter it all and it yeah. just literally gets put into the middle column. Yeah. And I read it out and I see if there's any emotional attachment. If there is, I know that I've not done my morning ritual properly. Okay. So I would say... So if it affects you, you think, yeah, I haven't done something right. Yeah. Okay. That's when I know, okay, my mindset isn't in check today because I'm getting stimulated by something. It's just, you know, somebody's model of the world, right? It's just for me to, <laughs> you know, actually hate them back. It's just, that's not the way, right way around. So that's what I tend to do. It's just, I, I think you've got to master your mindset and you've got to realize this. And for me, getting more haters is something that I try to do on purpose because what you realize with any great leader is that they've got so many haters, mm. but they do it on purpose because yeah. if you find that what haters hate about you and you over amplify it, the people who like you will start to love you. And so it repels the people who's not going to like you anyway. And it's, that's like, I don't know, that's quite a high ratio for me, which yeah. is good. I want to get it even higher. Yeah. Because the 50%, 60% who, who like me, guess what? They're going to love me. They're going to follow my work. And you would see that with anybody. I mean, look at, you know, they want to chuck Donald Trump, but look yeah. at Donald Trump. Yeah. He's got so many people who love him. They didn't like him, they love him. Yeah. And then people hate him, right? Yeah. People hate him. Yeah. That's what it's about. It's not about playing it safe, so. Wow, great advice. That's awesome advice. So I've got a question from one of the, um, I posted a status on Facebook before we did this interview. And uh, I've got a question that Jack Wright from Facebook, so hi Jack, um, <laughs> would like to ask, if you was just starting out your uh, out advertising online, advertising online and building a brand, what kind of things would you do knowing the things you do now? I would definitely get good at this this video, okay, because video is going to be everything. By 2019, it's predicted that 80% of video consumption, according to Cisco, 80% uh, online consumption will be video. That's according to Cisco. So everything's going towards video because it's real. So no longer can you get away with hiding behind pictures with text. So get good at video, and you've got to put yourself out there. Mm. And that's the thing with video. If you're not good on video, it's not good for branding and positioning if you're shy on video and you put it out there. Yeah. So that's why I'm saying practice getting good on video and you will not regret it. So do that, create a H2H brand, which is heart to heart. It's about realizing that your business has to have a greater cause, a big why. People are inspired by big whys. We're naturally programmed to, to seek purpose if your company gives somebody purpose, you've got a customer for life. So look to create a tribe and just really change the world. If you look at any of the big brands, that's the vision they had. You look at Steve Jobs, mm. put a ding in the freaking universe. Yeah. I mean, yeah. wow. Yeah. <laughs> yes, dream big. <laughs> great, great stuff. I hope that well, serves you well, Jack. <laughs> so 
quick fire round, some fun questions. Mm -hmm. Favourite film? Pursuit of Happiness. Great, that's an awesome <laughs> film. <laughs> um, Favourite song? Oh, uh, Filthy Avici Dubstep. Avicii Levels. Avicii Levels, good stuff. Favourite book? Favourite book? Probably the, like, the earliest book I've ever read, which was Dating, Mystery Method. Mystery Method by Mystery. Mystery Method by Mystery? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, favourite place to travel to? Like Thailand, Asia, somewhere. Thailand, yeah. great stuff. I'm going there next week. <laughs> <laughs> um, favourite hobby? Um, gym. <laughs> great stuff. Uh, what makes you the happiest? When I'm in a really positive state. When, when I've popped myself up. Before the stage, actually, sorry, after the stage, that's when after I'm After the happy. stage, yeah, yeah, great after stuff. The stage, yeah. I can imagine. Um, and your pet hate, something you're like, oh God, that really annoys me. When people don't follow through on the things you say, wow. and they say they will. Wow, okay. Not sure how you feel about that. But yeah, no, that's powerful. I've never heard that before. Yeah, I like that. Uh, especially as a mentor, mm. kind of you want them to succeed. Um, so the ending question is, in one sentence, explain what entrepreneurship means to you it's something that I always finish my uh, videos with it's this entrepreneurship is, is about living the life you're born to live and the only way you can really do that is to to follow your heart and take action and just trust that as Steve Jobs once said that the dots will one day connect so wow. I believe every single one of us you know we're not just born to pay the bills and die mm. So it's about having that courage to take action, to truly, truly live that life. I believe we're all destined to live, whatever that may be for your viewers. So. That, that's awesome. Well, Tim, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on Entrepreneur Thank and um, so inspiring of what you've done, inspiring people to take action, millions of people globally and a crazy phenomenal following on uh, Success Insiders. So you've inspired me and I'm sure you're gonna inspire many more people with this interview. And I just wanted to say thank you for your time today. Thank you so much. You. Cheers. Thank you.